Have you ever wondered how many independent networking connections you can have on a single computer? Well, I wonder that too, so that's not what we're doing today, because I don't know. Instead, we're going to be taking apart this old Toshiba laptop that has definitely been around for a while, it is a little nasty, but I want to see what's inside. We're going to start by flipping it over to battery releases. And this module should just pop out. Set that aside for future recycling. And then we're going to start with the two compartment bay doors. And it does look like these are all Phillips head screws. Like we've got some RAM inside. Two gigabyte sticks of DDR3, 1066 megahertz. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've seen a two gigabyte stick. All right, so we got four gigs total. This thing was just drowning in performance. We'll take out the second compartment door. And in here we can see our hard drive. Looks like this thing never got converted to an SSD. Previous owner wasn't sure what it had before it died. Right, we'll just slide this guy out and lift up. What are we working with? A 500 gigabyte hard drive and it looks like the date code is covered. But it is a 5400 RPM drive. This guy is from quite, quite a while ago. Alright, now that the hard drive is out, we're just going to go all the way around and remove all of these screws. I believe this unit, it is a C655 satellite system from Toshiba, is from 2010. And I think it might be an AMD system. We'll just have to find out. screws left and then we'll figure out how this guy cracks apart. Right, let's take a look. So we've got some plastic clips along this side. I'm wondering if I should remove the CD. Oh, okay, looks like the CD drives just force fit in there and you can just pull it out. Yeah, I guess that's nifty. It looks like there are a few more screws right underneath there that we will I will then switch to a flathead screw and begin to crack it open. I like to insert and then twist just to give it a little bit of room to move. Now that this has been cracked, we are going to release some of these ribbon cables. This 
Certainly not my favorite laptop designs, but not the worst one. And here we can see where some of this problem happened because we have the broken hinge. I'm just gonna clean up some of these wires and remove the pieces. All right, so looking by the keyboard deck, which is a disaster, we can see this has an Intel Core i3. Definitely an older one. This was native to Windows 7. And we're just gonna set that to the side and keep on digging. Switching back to a different Phillips head, we are going to continue removing the screws on the board. Looks like I missed one over here. I'm gonna pop the Wi Fi card, remove the antenna cables, that one screw. Here we have what a Wi-Fi card used to look like in 2010. I realized the phone stopped recording and I had already taken off the screen. <coughs> so you won't be able to see that. A couple more screws on the cooling fan. That is nasty. Here we can see our RAM slots from before. We have our heat pipes going to the cooling unit or radiator, and here is our CPU. And from this little indicator right here, it looks like this is one of the models that is still with the removable CPU. Just gonna zoom in a bit so y'all can see this as I take it out. And lift. Some very old thermal paste there. Very tacky. And there is our CPU. It does not look like it has a heat spreader at all. Switch back to flathead. Rotate this die by putting a flathead in here and twisting it should release the CPU. Spin that counterclockwise. Full rotation. It should just pop out. Like that. So this Intel i3 still has pins in it. When's the last time you saw an Intel CPU that had pins on the inside? Now even uh, AMD is going away from that model. We're going to see if we can remove this little piece of separator paper to get a better look at what we're working with. Let me see if I can't clean that up. All right, I 
now have a little cotton swab with some isopropyl alcohol in it. We're just going to gently dab away this old thermal paste. Right, and I will get a Q-tip for the rest. I'll just clean up the last little bit of this stuff. The mirror finish on these has always just been fascinating to me. I believe on this one, we have the central processor and then we have the integrated graphics. I don't know if that's accurate. Let me know in the comments if you know, but I think that's what this one is. And this appears to be, let's see if I can zoom in on that, an i3-350. 360M. Man, that's really small. We're gonna actually set this back in the socket and then zoom in on it. I can't quite read that. A 380M. I'm not familiar with what that is. So I'm gonna do a quick research. All right, so it looks like the Intel i3 380M built on 32 nanometer, two core, four thread. Its base clock is 2.53, or 2.53 gigahertz, pulls 35 watts, launched in Q3 of 2010. It can support a whopping eight gigs of memory max. And it looks like it has 382 million transistors inside running on the PGA-988 or BGA-1288 socket. And with some further research, it looks like this has a GMA HD integrated graphics card. I have no idea what that really is or have any specs for it. All right, so that is what is inside an old satellite laptop from Toshiba. This i3 380M from 2010 a mobile laptop CPU that is still removable and is only 13 years old.